Hi everybody, I hope you're doing marvelously well. We're big, we're bad, we're back. I'm dressed in black. Yes, I'm back in black. With another Fact Friday. Once again, we're here in lovely Labarca Sound, Nick Salden's studio in Balls Cross. Yes, Balls Cross in West Sussex. There's some great questions this week, and this first one is probably going to be quite contentious, which usually all of these questions and given answers are quite contentious, but this is coming from a guitar player. Think about that when you hear the answer to this question. What is the best instrument to play for music production? I'm a guitar player, so what are you expecting? Get, learn to play the guitar! No, if I could do it all over again and I could take my 10,000 hours plus that I put into playing the guitar and could do it on any instrument, it would be the keyboard. 150%. And if you just want to concentrate on music production for a second, think about this logically. Yes, there are guitars with MIDI pickups on it. I've tried them. Some of them are pretty good. There's some very smart people doing that kind of stuff. But ultimately, you're limited to six strings. Okay, maybe you have a seven string, but here we have 10 fingers and a keyboard and a keyboard that has pads and all kinds of midi schmidi. The point is with a keyboard, you can trigger, well, first of all, you can play acoustic instruments. You can have a grand piano, a Hammond organ, a Wurlitzer, a clavinet, a whatever, all of those beautiful instruments. But you have the world literally at your fingertips where you can trigger any virtual instrument in the entire planet. And don't get me wrong, I'll Say it once again for all of us guitar players that are offended at my answer here. Now, if I could do it all over again, it would be the keyboard. If I could be as good at another instrument as I am as the guitar, it would be a keyboard, a keyboard, a keyboard. It's amazing. You can sit there, you can program your drum parts. Even if you don't have a pad, you can just use keys, string arrangements, pianos, synthesizers, triggering, anything, you name it. Plus, of course, with a keyboard controller comes all of these fancy little wheels and buttons and knobs and stuff that can control plugins. And oh, it's just absolutely wonderful. So if you're starting off and you want to learn a particular instrument to help your production, it would be the keyboard. Learn keyboards. Plus, quite frankly, there's a logic to it that I like now. Thinking as a guitar player, do you know how many places the middle C is? It's all over the neck. Do you know how many places middle C is on a piano? One, and guess what? It's in the middle. How do I stay creative? I often think that my workaholic kind of attitude and sort of ADD way of doing life helps in this situation. Now, Many, many people, of course, will talk about being focused on one project and seeing it from beginning to end. I completely and utterly understand that answer. It's a really, really good answer. It's interesting that all of my creative friends, and some of them, obviously, I'm blessed to know, are incredibly successful, don't work like that at all. For every single person I know that's incredibly methodical, that may have sailed through school and everything was so easy for them and mathematics was the simplest thing they've ever done in their life, for every person like that, I can think of a hundred successful artists that are moving around between projects and keeping it fresh and interesting. For me, the way to be creative is to be a creative person. I was listening to an amazing interview the other day when I drove to pick up my son from school, and it was with Andrew Scott. If you don't know Andrew Scott, you should do. He played Moriarty and Sherlock and so many other things. A wonderful, wonderful Irish actor. Everything he said just resonated with me. His mother was an art teacher and an artist, and he spent all of his life up until the age of 17 thinking he was going to be a painter and painted every day and took art lessons and was obsessed with it. And then he got offered the opportunity to act in like a, a student movie and boom, everything changed. And the more he talked about his creative process, like he said, he goes into situations wanting to rehearse, but not wanting to rehearse on his own. He doesn't like to sit there and overly read scripts and go through every single little detail and work on that. He wants to do it in real time with people. And everything he was saying about this starting off wanting to do painting and sculpture and stuff is exactly how I grew up with my father. And then there's just a switch. Music at 16 was like, this is it. I am now going to do music after spending 16 years wanting to 
paint. I get it because it all comes from the same place. If you're a creative, you can be into embroidery. You can be a milliner. You can be making hats. And you can one day just switch off and do music or music and do the other way around. The point is, is like, that makes sense to me. So how do you stay creative? Find creative outlets. If you're getting frustrated with what you're doing, do something else. I'm not one of these people that's like, you know, wait for the muse to strike and then, no, just do it. You know, as that Billy Crystal movie said, throw mama from the train, you know, a writer writes. If you want to do music and you're struggling with a mix, you know what? Go and do something else creative. Maybe mix a completely different song. Just think about things that keep those creative juices flowing. I do believe that perseverance is important. Of course I do. I believe that when Pete Townsend was talking about when he writes at his best is when he's actually down and he's in an emotional state and he writes his best songs. I believe all of that, but I believe there's truth in all of these answers. You can identify with any piece of it. It can be that you are a sculptor who does music, a musician who does sculpture, a writer, you know, a literature kind of writer, as well as a songwriter. All of these things make sense to me. So to be creative and keep the creativity going is just follow the muse, follow where you want to go, what you're feeling. It's not the end of the world to be multitasking other different things. I just really strongly believe that. I have a guitar always around when I'm mixing. And if I'm just getting, ah, my idea of taking a break is, yeah, make a cup of tea, pick up a guitar, work on a part. It's got nothing to do with what I'm mixing. It just keeps me going. It keeps the creativity going. It's all coming from the same place. So thank you, Andrew Scott. He really made me think about this because here he is and he still paints and still draws and he's an actor and he's one of the smartest people I've ever heard interviewed. It's that kind of thinking that makes sense to me. If you're a creative, be creative. It will help all different areas of your life. So a great example is having produced like a pro the website, you know, writing blogs and emails as well as filming the videos, as well as mixing and, you know, being on this side of the camera, doing all of this stuff. It's all the same thing. It's all creativity. It's all thinking about what I love and what I do and what I'm passionate about. So for me, creativity comes from all kinds of places. Then, of course, speaking to what Pete Townsend was talking about, I don't know if I personally can wallow in self-pity and write a great song. That's never really been. But I can write songs about things I love. My wife, I can write songs about that. You know, if you're passionate about something, draw the passion and use it. Utilize that. So for me, I don't like this idea of this sort of negativity, people saying, oh, it's ADD. I just don't agree with that. I'm sorry, I don't. And I don't mind it. You can all disagree with me. And I'm sure there's some, you know, great therapists and psychiatric help people and psychologists and whatever who can tell me I'm wrong about this. But I don't, for me and everybody I know that's creative, we're all a little bit, you know, quote unquote, ADD. Now, whether I am probably ADD or not is irrelevant. I'm just saying... I like to do multiple things. And if I'm not being challenged in multiple different directions, then I'm not, creativity is not flowing. So my answer, my quick answer is just be creative in multiple different ways in your life. And if it's not working in one area, it will probably work in another. And they all feed each other. All levels of creativity feed each other. Andrew Scott, thank you again. Artist turned actor. You know, I was an artist turned musician. It all makes perfect sense to me. Hopefully, all that rambling makes perfect sense to you. What makes a good assistant? So we did a video. Well, actually, Eric did a video with Eddie, our intern, one of our interns, about a week or two ago. So please check that out. They had a discussion without me involved. I wasn't there at all, talking about what makes a good assistant, what was good for them, and what has helped them you know, become more and more successful. So about a year or two ago, I was asked a very similar question and I did a video on what to do and what not to do as an assistant. And I told the story of an intern that we had who on his first day 
gave Steven Tyler, this assistant was probably 18, fresh out of high school, going to music school. And he gave Steven Tyler on his first day advice on his vocals. For real. Steven Tyler walked into the control room, asked a question, and I was like, first of all, it was a great take. There was a couple of things that, uh, you know, could have been better, but, you know, having done this my whole life and obviously working with a producer like Jack Douglas, I know when to encourage and how to build up and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and Jack spoke first and complimented him on a couple of different bits and pieces and tried to encourage those kinds of stuff. And, he, and Stephen being Stephen said, well, Warren, what do you think? And I was like, I agree with Jack entirely. What he's talking about in that second verse is uh, makes perfect sense. And you really connected on those phrases he was talking about. And also this other phrase that exemplifies what Jack's talking about. So it reinforced all the positive and whatever. The assistant said, oh, I don't agree with that. And started literally going off on some really random tangent that made no sense to the song or the vocals. But probably in his limited way of working he only knew how to do one kind of thing and thought that if it was done that way it would work Stephen looked absolutely baffled and confused and we were like going like what are you doing so when people ask me what should an assistant do quite often i say don't do that learn to understand your place and if it's your first day in a studio and you're talking to somebody who has been singing professionally at that point for over 40 years and a producer that had, in Jack Douglas, had produced, you know, John Lennon and Aerosmith and Cheap Trick and hundreds of other huge bands, Super Tramp, you name it. Listen to them, be supportive of them, because especially one that's had a long-term relationship with, with Aerosmith, you know, had done Rocks and Toys in the Attic. I suppose what was interesting and kind of irked me is when I put that video up, a couple of people said, Warren, I can't believe you're not supportive of young up-and-coming people and let them have their opinion. And I, I am supportive of young up-and-coming people. And the best way to be supportive of those young up-and-coming people is to encourage them to do the right thing in that situation so they still are able to work in the music industry. Because Jack afterwards was like, if that guy wants to keep giving unsolicited opinions that go against the recording, he can't be in the room. So I had to give him a talking to him and just say, look, you can't, you can't do that. You cannot give an opinion that's not really based on any kind of experience, number one, but also goes against what the producer's saying, especially, you know, unsolicited, where you weren't even being asked. And that, to me, was the best advice I could give to that assistant. So it's a, it's a great question, but quite often, the biggest answer is just to understand your place and be supportive of those around you. Be of use to people around you. And it can be as simple as, you know, as Dave Jordan used to say, take a good food order. And that sounds so demeaning. I can't believe Warren said that. Yeah, but his point is it's unlikely that people would think that you could do a more complicated task if you can't fulfill a very simple one. So yes, take a good food order. You know, if there's 12 people in the studio, which there quite often is, and very, people are very specific how they want the food to be, if you nail it, get it right, the singer's going to be like, oh, I, I like this guy. I like this, this girl. They're, they're, they're being really, they're listening to me. They're paying attention. Um, um, maybe they can help me do this other thing, blah, blah, blah. Before you know it, that is how you get more responsibility. Simple as that. So it's kind of a catch-22. I'm trying not to be negative about that situation with that guy. I haven't seen him around since then. This was 10 years ago, and I don't know if he still has a career. But I can tell you all of the people like Phil Allen and Eric and Brian Joseph, hi Brian, all these people that assisted us that have gone on to win Grammys and have become incredibly successful. And they all had a huge amount of humility and they learned in situations and didn't, frankly, think that they knew better than anybody else. They just, even if they did have an inkling, it could be different. They just kept it to themselves and were supportive of the session. And, you know, they go off to win Grammys. I know that sounds trite, but it is true. These people have become very, very successful. I've had three assistants that started with me that all have won Grammys, and all of them worked their butts off and worked ridiculously long hours and suited up and showed up 
every single day for the session. All right, well, I'm sure this is going to start a lot of chatter. Uh, Again, I'm incredibly supportive of young up-and-coming people, and the best way to be supportive is to be honest and give them opportunity to improve. I'm definitely not that guy that would be like, get out of my session. I've seen it happen as an engineer. I've seen a producer chuck out an assistant, but it's usually something a little bit more, uh, a little bit worse than maybe saying the wrong thing one time. One would hope, wouldn't they? All right, thanks everybody. Um, Please leave some more comments and questions down below. We love doing these Fact Fridays. And uh, so long, farewell, Alvida Zay and au revoir, adios, goodbye.